Hi everyone, this is Mr. Robotic Warfare, and today I have yet another adder to show off. Uh, after the last video, I had some ideas to come up with a new design, and what I've come up with now, I think to be more or less the pinnacle of what's possible uh, with this kind of architecture. So just as a quick recap of what we've looked at previously, uh, the first videos on this channel that I showed off, adder related, uh, were these two devices here. Uh, these are carry look ahead adders, and they essentially work by doing the carry calculation completely ahead of time. So you spend all this time doing all of the calculation for the carries, and then at the end, you essentially coalesce that into an output. So this is an 8-bit machine. This is a 4-bit machine. The thing that I showed off in the last video was this ripple carry adder, which is much more compact. It's 8 bits wide, and it does the carry calculation in an entirely different way. Uh, and this is kind of your, what you would consider a basic kind of adder. Uh, amusingly, it was harder for me to build this than it was for me to build that because this is a little bit more systematic. This is a little bit more <laughs> artistic, shall we say. But this ripple carry adder works by essentially doing the carry computation for each bit individually one by one. So it does uh, the calculation for the zeroth bit, and then it ripples to the first bit and then to the second bit and et cetera. And what essentially is meant by the word ripple is that that, that carry is essentially rippling through the machine uh, through each bit. And in the last video I showed off uh, that if you have everything set as um, essentially set so that that will happen, you can actually see that carry ripple all the way through. So this is what I showed off in the last video, which was marginally faster for some calculations. So let's just once again, go over uh, the speed of each of these things. So for this machine right here, the Ripple Carry Adder, an individual calculation for just a couple of bits is only 16 game ticks. Now, for a full calculation that uses the full critical path of the machine, that's going to be 44 game ticks. When we look at the other machine, that Carry Look Ahead Adder is going to do any calculation that you ask of it, regardless of the input, in 38 game ticks. So in the uh, worst case, it is actually slightly faster than this machine right here. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to find a way to build an adder that is even faster than both of these and is still relatively compact. You can see that this machine is much more compact compared to that big one down there for the same number of bits. So I was able to come up with something for that. And what I used was what's called a parallel prefix adder or parallel prefix architecture, which is an even different kind from the first two and works by essentially doing a little bit of both. While the ripple carry adder does everything per bit, right? It does it individually and then it moves over. The carry look ahead adder does everything at the same time, right? It does all of the calculation out front and then it actually does the calculations. There's the, the parallel prefix architecture is kind of the middle ground to those two things. And it does some of the calculations uh, as we go and some of them out front, and it kind of combines it into uh, what we call parallel prefix, which means that we kind of split things into three stages. We do those stages of computation, and then that gives us the output. I'm actually going to do a, a separate video on how this works, which is linked in the description, uh, which will contain a much more thorough explanation of how parallel prefix works and how this design actually works. But today I really just wanted to do a quick showcase. So what I've been able to come up with is this guy right here. So this is an 8-bit parallel prefix adder. For those of you that uh, are familiar with this, this is based on the Skolansky architecture. Uh, but let's just do a quick demo as we like to do to show off that this works. So let's just do your basic one plus one. And there you can see two. Let's do that, oop, that full ripple carry test now. So we go all the way to the end. So on the ripple carry adder, what, what, what do I mean by when I say the ripple carry test is for a ripple carry adder, this is essentially the critical path, right? You take the one bit and it has to ripple all the way down and we're expecting just uh, the final most significant bit to be set. But when we do it with this stuff, we can see that we still get that result nice and quick. Now, in fact, how quick? Because this machine is pretty quick. Like I said, the, the ripple carry adder in the worst case is 44 game ticks. The carry look ahead adder for eight bits in the worst case is 38 game ticks. This one in the worst case, or in fact any case, is only 22 game ticks. So this is more or less twice as fast as anything that I've built previously. So what that essentially means is that this machine is exactly what I set out to make. It's a combination of the two. It's still relatively compact, 
Uh, it does the carry calculation in a different way, and it's incredibly fast <laughs> compared to the other two machines. So like I said, 22 game ticks from the second that we pulse the input to the second that we get the output. And I wanted to do another quick demonstration uh, just to show what this kind of thing uh, can do. So this is essentially the adder that you see right here. And I've added some additional stuff in the front uh, to do something kind of neat. So if we set it off going here, see if you can recognize what it's doing. Any ideas yet? For those of you that haven't recognized this, uh, what I've done is essentially I've looped this machine back on itself. And what I'm doing is I'm calculating the numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, so essentially what I've done is you're, you're, I'm taking the output of this machine and feeding it back into the input in such a way that I'm adding uh, consecutive pairs of numbers. So if you're not familiar with the Fibonacci sequence, essentially what you're doing is you uh, start with the numbers zero and one, and then from there, you uh, each na the, each subsequent number of the sequence is the sum of the first two. So zero plus one, which are our two starting numbers, is one. And then we use the two previous numbers from that. One plus one is two, then three, then five, then eight, and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly reset this. Essentially, what I've done here is I've just done a really janky loop back test. Uh, this is not optimized at all for what I'm trying to do here. I just wanted to do this as a quick demo. So let's also slow the game down to half speed, and we can actually talk about what's happening. So it starts with 0 and 1. So there's our 1. And in fact, it actually really just starts with 0. So we're going to see another 1 come up here in a second, if I remember to actually enable the machine. <laughs> here we go. So there's zero plus one is one. We're gonna start with another one here because the Fibonacci sequence actually starts with one, one. Now we're gonna see a two. So one, zero is two. Next, we would expect to get three. So one, one is three. Now three plus two is five, which is one, zero, one. Five plus three is eight, which is one, zero, zero, zero. And so on and so forth. Now, if we speed the game back up to its normal speed, 20 TPS, you can see that even with a completely unoptimized loopback system, this thing is actually doing the calculations pretty quick. So yeah, like I said earlier, this was just a, a quick showcase video to show that I've been able to put this together. Uh, expect a longer video coming up that actually explains uh, what parallel prefix is, how I went through and made it, because there were a lot of different iterations that went into figuring out how to make this. Um, and then gonna do some additional demonstrations and, and show off other things. The last thing that I wanted to mention is how scalable this design is. So for this 8-bit version here, we have 22 game ticks. If you remember back from the carry look ahead videos, the four game tick adder is, or excuse me, the four bit carry look ahead adder is much faster in terms of game ticks than the eight bit. And in fact, with the ripple carry adder as well, the fewer number of bits you have, uh, the greater speed or the, the faster the machine is. And that makes good sense for additional bits, you'd expect additional delay. So this is a 16 bit machine over here that I've built on the same architecture that, as this eight bit machine. So this 8-bit machine is 22 game ticks, while the 16-bit is only 26 game ticks. So for doubling the width of the device, we've only added an additional four game ticks of delay. That's essentially two observers to completely double the size of this. And let's just demonstrate that real fast. So what we've got here is the full ripple test, one bit all the way up to those 16 bits here. And almost before I can even fly over there, we've got our answer at the output. So, needless to say, kind of neat. Cool. All right. Well, that's all for this video. Thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you later.